Today we're making an uh, instant pot ravioli with frozen ravioli. And this was one that Jen came up with and I really love it. <laughs> she, she, hit. she actually cooked it for me at my little place in Vegas and, and it was a big hit. And the best thing is that it's so easy. So it's got a ton of flavor, super easy. Um, it's easily doubled without changing the rest of the ingredients. We just throw in two bags of frozen lasagna instead of one. And it's a little bit less saucy, but it's still fabulous. So yeah, so the shortcut is using the frozen ravioli. Yep. So but it tastes like lasagna. Yep, it's delicious. So I'm Jen. And I'm Barbara. And this is pressure cooking today. So first we'll get our uh, instant pot on saute mode. I think we've already preheated it. Yeah, I'm preheating it. It'll actually say hot mm -hmm. when it's ready to go. And when you're browning something like ground beef or this sausage that we're using today, you really want it to stay hot. You want it to be hot so that you get a nice sear quickly on your ground beef yeah. and it, um, it doesn't dry out as much and it releases easier from the pan. Yeah. So now it should read hot. And so we're gonna go ahead and add some olive oil, just a tablespoon is all you need. And all. We're using the Pro today, which has a flat bottom, which is nice because the oil doesn't run to the sides. So we'll go ahead and add that. Um, we, we love this uh, chopper. We'll add a link to it uh, on Amazon. This is just from OXO and it makes breaking up ground beef. So much easier. Sausage. Any kind of ground meat, sausages, chicken, beef, turkey, it's all the same and it's just kind of like a smash and twist a little bit. Right, and it just makes it come together so much faster. So you can see since we preheated that um, pan, it's browning up really quickly. So you don't have to stir it the whole time. No, I do. I, I, you have to let it rest for a minute so it can kind of cook on that underside and then you stir and toss it. And yeah. Um, the nice thing also is that you don't have to wait until every last bit of it is cooked all the way through because it will continue to cook in the pressure cooking cycle. So you just want it cooked enough that it'll be done by the time you're done pressure cooking. Right, you want it to be broken up and, and brown so that it gets mixed in easily with the sauce. Yep. When we're cooking it on the go, I generally just use a Jimmy Dean sausage that comes in the tube. Mom went fancy and got sausage <laughs> from the butcher. Yeah, I went to Harmon's, our local grocery <laughs> store that I like to shop at, and they have some country style pork sausage that I like quite a bit. So. I picked that up, but just the Jimmy Dean's in the tube is what Jen yep. usually gets. If you're rather, if you're like, sausage is not for me, go with ground beef. It subs in this recipe, they work just the same. Let's talk a little bit about the grease. Okay, so uh, depending on what you're using, there may be a lot of grease at the end of this, or just a little. If it's just a little, I don't usually take the time to pull it out and drain it, but if you want to, you absolutely can. All right. And See, we're getting a little bit of this sausage stuck on the bottom, but not a lot. So when you um, go to add your beef broth, you want to kind of scrape that up a little bit, mm -hmm. just so that um, you, you don't, don't get the burn notice. Stuck. But really, we don't have very much, and it's because we preheated our pot. Yeah. And that does make a big difference. Okay, I think it's looking really good, and I, we don't have a whole lot of grease. Um, so I don't think we need to go ahead and, and drain that. Okay, does that look about right? You ready for yeah. the beef? Okay, so we'll add our broth. You see how it kind of sizzles like that? And I'm just going to go ahead and scrape up the bottle a little, little bit. That way you know you won't get the burn notice at all. So that looks pretty good. Jen, I'm going to give you this to throw into the sink. Yep. We'll switch to a spoon. Okay, so the most important part of this recipe, if you only pay attention to one part of the video, it's this part. You gotta cook in layers. I'm gonna cancel this so it turns off the saute. There we go. You don't wanna cook off all that beef broth. No, you need that to come out. Okay, so talk about the layers. So if you, the tomato sauce, if it were right up against the bottom, would, um, would settle to the bottom and cause the burn notice. I'm gonna add that. Go ahead and just get those last ones out. 
and you just want them in a nice kind of flat layer about the same and then we'll add our uh, tomatoes the fire roasted diced tomatoes you can just buy at the supermarket and put them in a flat layer but you don't want to mix them with the ravioli and then we'll put our sauce on top again just laid right on top just a little bit of tomato paste. It really ups the yeah, it flavor. Adds a little sweetness. But again, like just, just keep it on the top and then we'll sprinkle our spices over the top. And as this cooks, it'll get mixed in. So that's just onion powder, garlic powder, salt, oregano, and some basil. Yep. Um, so now we lock our lid in place. Grab this. Make sure your ring's in place. Always double check your ring's in place. Lock it. All right, we're gonna do pressure cook and just two minutes. And use a custom setting on this pro. We want to do high and we'll change it to two minutes and start. So, and the reason it's just a two minute setting is this, this will cook really fast. If you were to use the thawed ravioli, it would be too long and your pasta would be overcooked. But for some reason that that frozen, it helps it hold up, I don't know, as it thaws in the pressure cooker. Right, so it doesn't get overcooked and it's perfect. Yep, it's delicious. So, and then um, after the two minutes are up, a quick release. So we'll be back then. Okay, so it's done cooking. We're gonna go ahead and do a quick pressure release. Yep. So the pin dropped and we can go ahead and open it. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a stir. Normally I would put the lid in the lid fins, but it's just too in the way when we're filming videos. So we're just gonna thicken up the sauce right now. Make a little, a little slurry. Cornstarch slurry, so I'm gonna cancel the keep warm setting. And then we'll go ahead and do saute again. Cornstarch doesn't work as a thickening agent until it reaches a very specific temperature. And so, because this was just boiling, it should be pretty close, but. And I just adjusted it down to more of a medium heat. I almost never do that because I forget to put things back where I left them. So see how thick that cornstarch thickened up. All right, now we get to add our cottage cheese. Um, so in lasagna, um, oftentimes you use cottage cheese or ricotta, mm -hmm. um, but you feel like... I, I think the, the cottage cheese is a little bit creamier and it melts a little bit better. Um, let me turn the saute down on that just a little bit. If you want to. I'm just going to stir it fast. Okay. And then okay. we put the spinach in to let it kind of wilt. Yeah, so just some baby spinach that I just roughly chopped up. I like littler pieces of the spinach. Um, but you could use regular spinach. Just I chop that up as well. I love the color that the spinach gives right. it. It just makes it look so fresh. Mm-hmm. happy yeah it looks great so it's quarter cup of heavy cream just to add a little more richness and it really makes a difference with like the mouthfeel I know it sounds crazy it's just such a small amount but it it really just is I don't know palatable is that the and then it gives it such a pretty color too so and as you can see this one's pretty saucy um, these days my boys are eating so much that we generally always double the ravioli that's in it. Um, and your pasta will continue to absorb some oh, of that absolutely. sauce as it cools down. I'm going to go ahead and turn that saute function off. All right. And we can go ahead and get a plate and dish some up. Okay. We'll go ahead and just put some on the plate. Plate bowl, dish bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that look great? 
Oh, can't wait to dig into this. Okay, we're going to top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Just a little, little sprinkle, make it look fancy. Yeah, sprinkle. And then we've got some fresh basil. So you guys are going to want to make this one again and again. I know we do at our house. Mm -hmm. it, it really is one on, on repeat. Our, it's often asked for when we're like, what do you want to eat this week, kids? <laughs> they ask for this one. So we hope you like it. If you do, please leave us a comment. Let it know. Let us know how it goes. Um, be sure and like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.